Halfland, an ahistorical prehistory. The fight at the ford. In the year 97 of the Common Reckoning, Bygarth was beset by foes. Following his defeat by Orm at the Battle of Bleakbrook, Bygarth fled back to the Hillhold, where he learned that Earl Body of Unnerscrag was marching north toward him. Bygarth deserted Botulf, the child king, and fled eastward, over the river Raven's Head, and into the hills beyond. In those hills dwelt Body's brother, Brodeer. Brodeer had no great liking for Body, nor for Bygarth, nor for Botulf, and nor indeed for anyone else. What Brodeer wanted was to be left alone. Bygarth would no doubt be pursued by his enemies, Brodeer would be expected to take sides, and war would potentially lay waste his lands. Brodeer decided to forestall this possibility by ambushing Bygarth, killing him, sending his head to Body, and requesting that, in return, Body and Orm leave the lands to the east of the River Raven's Head in peace. Brodeer's household was not large. He was not in a position to attack a large force. But Bygarth was not accompanied by a large force. He only had five companions, all professional warriors in armour. Two of these had crossbows, and the other three had spears and shields. Brodeer could also only muster five companions. He was accompanied by Aslak and Otrig, free dwarves with mail and shields and stout axes. The balance of the party consisted of three of Brodeer's liege dwarves. They had no armour, but they did have crossbows, and they knew how to use them. As Bygarth's path wound through the hills, it came to a vigorous stream, which was crossed by way of a ford. This was the spot that Brodeer selected for his attack. He split his force into three. On the side of the stream from which Bygarth would approach the ford, he positioned Otrig and one of the liege dwarves, concealed in a thicket within bowshot of the ford. The other members of Brodeer's party were likewise concealed on the other side of the ford. Aslak and a liege dwarf in a thicket on Bygarth's right, while Brodeer and the last liege dwarf lurked in a thicket to Bygarth's left. Bygarth and his party were entirely unsuspecting of any danger. They marched up to the ford and started to cross it. It was only when they were wading shin-deep in water in the middle of the stream that Aslak sounded his horn from the trees to their front right. Even as they wondered what this signified, a crossbow bolt hissed close overhead, loosed from the thicket behind them. More crossbow bolts sped toward them, from both the left and the right, and Bygarth realised that enemies were all around him. Bygarth reacted decisively, he and his spear dwarves would push forward and try to break through the attackers in front of him, while his crossbow dwarves protected his rear. Brodeer observed Bygarth and his spear dwarves pushing on, and feared that Bygarth might slip the net. He gesticulated to Aslak opposite him, and the two of them started to head away from the stream, moving on Bygarth's flanks and parallel to his course, with the intention of closing off Bygarth's escape. Bygarth and his spear dwarves were now climbing up the slopes of a low hill. Behind them, at the water's edge, Bygarth's crossbow dwarves were loosing bolts to their left and right, trying to hit Brodeer's liege dwarves in the trees. But, as I have already said, Brodeer's liege dwarves knew how to use their crossbows. 
as the rearmost of Bygarth's dwarves stood in the shallows, reloading his crossbow, a bolt flew from the trees and struck him, and he fell into the rushing waters, dyeing them red with his life's blood. And another bolt ended the life of his companion on the river bank. Brodir's liege dwarves now turned their attention to Bygarth and his spear dwarves, but these new targets had the benefit of shields which proved impermeable to crossbow bolts. And still, Bygarth and his spear dwarves pressed on, widening the range. It was now that Brodir and Aslak made their move, advancing from each flank to block Bygarth's retreat. To Bygarth's rear, Otrig had emerged from the trees and was running up to the ford. Aslak did not wait for Otrig to arrive. He saw an opportunity to end things there and then, and charge straight at Bygarth. Aslak's axe swung in a mighty arc, but Bygarth stepped aside, and the blow did not find its target. And now two of Bygarth's spear dwarves came to his assistance, and Aslak's body fell lifeless upon the grass. Bygarth's remaining spear dwarf ran at Brodir who swung his great two-handed sword above his head and bellowed his mighty war cry. But the spear dwarf was a seasoned warrior. He was not intimidated by Brodir, and he knew that a spear is longer than a two-handed sword. Even as Brodir stepped forward, intending to bring his mighty sword crashing down on his opponent's head, the spear thrust forward and Brodir was impaled. That was the end of Brodir. Bygarth and his spear dwarves gathered themselves together. A few final crossbow bolts flew past them, but with the death of their liege, Brodir's crossbow dwarves had lost their enthusiasm, and their efforts were ineffective. They did not pursue Bygarth, who continued on his way without further molestation. Thus ended the fight at the ford.